Hello champions and welcome back to PW English and I am your Diksha ma'am. So today we are going to start with the chapter neural control and coordination. So if I talk about the neural system in various organisms, the neural system is not always you know so much developed in every organism present on this uh, planet earth. But from where this uh, neurons or the nervous tissue originate? The porifera phylum did not have any type of tissue. So the tissue starts from cylindrata. Also porifera didn't have any kind of, you know, these sense organs, right? So that was a simple kind of organism. But the neuron starts from the phylum cylindrata. So like in cylindrata, we have organism known as hydra. So these cylindrata, example hydra, have neurons, right? And here the neural system is simply comprised of the plexus. What is plexus? The, the group of neurons, the group of neurons and hence you call it as a plexus. The plexus is basically the group of the neurons which are present in a coordinated way, okay? And later on, the organism they develop, they show evolution and, uh, you know, the system gets more developed and hence the organism forms the nerves and ganglions. And after that, after evolution, what was formed? The nerves and ganglions were formed. Like, as you know, in cockroach, in cockroach, the ganglions are present, right? In nerves, a uh, group of uh, nerves are the group of neurons only. And later on, a complete nervous system was formed in vertebrates complete nervous system was formed in vertebrate okay since you are vertebrate and we consider ourselves to be so complex and you know highly uh, what you can say uh, highly developed organism so we have a complete neural system so let's talk about us because here we are talking about human physiology so if i talk about the human nervous system the human nervous system comprises of two parts one is your central nervous system cns and another is your peripheral nervous system pns Okay, so the central nervous system, CNS, I'm also writing full forms here. It comprises of two things and what are these? The important body organs, the brain and spinal cord. Whereas whatever nerves that are coming out from the brain and spinal cord, that comprises of your peripheral nervous system. So this PNS is peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system so what does peripheral nervous system contains it contains all the nerves that arise from cns okay for example boys and girls here we have brain and this is spinal cord so this is your central nervous system so whatever nerves that are coming from here this green one it comprises of your peripheral nervous system okay now the peripheral nervous system is further of two types. How many types? Two types. So one system is your somatic neural system and another is your autonomic neural system, ANS. What's the difference? Right. All these nerves, we have comprised them or we have divided them into two parts. There are certain nerves that are sending signal, which are sending signal from CNS to skeletal muscle, your voluntary muscle. All these form the somatic neural system, right? There must be certain nerves that are sending signal from the CNS to your skeletal muscle. That becomes a part of your somatic neural system. Whereas the nerves that supplies or that carries information from CNS to your smooth muscle, to your smooth muscles or your visceral organ or your visceral organs that comprise of your autonomic nervous system, that comprise of your autonomic nervous system, right? So here, all these nerves, they are forming a system called peripheral nervous system. Out of it, some nerves are giving information to skeletal muscle and some are giving information to smooth muscle or visceral organ. So likewise, we have divided it into two parts. The autonomic nervous system is further of two types, right? So the autonomic nervous system, ANS, is further of two types. One is sympathetic and another is parasympathetic. And both work opposite to each other. 
both work opposite to each other they both work antagonistic antagonistic means opposite both are opposite to each other okay if this is increasing your heartbeat this will decrease your heartbeat right i am writing certain examples here if this is increasing your heartbeat maybe this will decreases your heartbeat okay the detail of this nervous system autonomic nervous system will be doing in the later section of this chapter so this was just the overview okay so guys uh, before starting this chapter i want to give you one advice uh, if you have attended my lecture structural organization in animals that's pretty good if not go to that uh, particular uh, lecture in that lecture i have taught the structure of neuron in detail okay so just go through the structure of neuron from that portion here we will not be covering that again okay so here what we will be covering those things which are which we i have not taught you there and belongs to this chapter all right i hope you understand this and uh, let's move further to the types of neuron then so the neuron we have done it so i'm writing here we have done it in the structural organization in animal in animal okay so let's talk about types of neurons the neurons are of various type the first category is unipolar so this uh, uh, type of neuron what the classification of neuron that we are doing right here is based upon its structure so this classification is based upon its structure okay so you know what is a polarity or polar like uh, on the uh, on the globe you must have seen there is a north pole and there is a south pole that means there are two poles right two sides so likewise depending upon how many processes a neuron have how many processes a neuron have we um, technically we technically have divided the uh, neurons into various part in that neuron we have done that a neuron have dendrites and it have one uh, exon okay this is what we have done for example if this is a main portion that is cyton so this portion is for example one dendrite and this is one exon now i have two poles now i will be which uh, neuron i will be bipolar that means i have two poles if i would be a neuron with only this type cyton no dendrite no dendrite and this only exon is present right here then i will be a unipolar so unipolar is that type of a neuron which have this one arm or one process only and this one process is known as exon so unipolar neuron have no dendrite but it only have exon and so this is a one process only so you call it as unipolar you find the unipolar type of neurons in embryos not in adults okay second category is bipolar as i've told you in bipolar we have two poles two polarities that means this is a center portion of a neuron and neuron will be having one dendrite and one exon so two poles are there so we call it as bipolar so bipolar where do you find these bipolar type of neuron in the retina of eye in the retina of eye in your olfactory epithelium in your olfactory epithelium what is olfactory epithelium the epithelium present in the nose that helps you to smell that helps you to smell then we have another category then we have another category that is your pseudo unipolar and another category multipolar okay let's talk about multipolar first multipolar is the one which we have drawn in that chapter as well this is the cyton and it has a lot of dendrite but one exon okay so hence you call it as multipolar these are number of dendrites and there is one exon this is multipolar so multipolar is found in brain and spinal cord and brain and spinal cord they are collectively known as cns central nervous system so the nerve fibers of central nervous system or the neurons of central nervous system they have multipolar type of neuron then we have pseudo unipolar so pseudo means false so it's a kind of a neuron which was developed as a unipolar okay but later in life it decided to change okay it decided to change and it bifurcates this one process one become exon another become dendrite okay 
so that's why you call it as pseudo unipolar where do you find it in the dorsal root of spinal cord you know what is a spinal cord so spinal cord have two side this side of spinal cord is ventral this is dorsal if i have this spinal cord right present right here so this side will be dorsal and this side will be ventral so at the dorsal side i will be having the pseudo unipolar type of neuron okay moving further to the next we have types of nerve fibers the so nerve fibers according to their function are of two types one is afferent another is efferent now you must be wondering what is the difference between a nerve fiber and a neuron so the axon portion of a neuron they are known as nerve fibers so whenever i'm talking about nerve fibers i'm not including the cyton i'm talking about axons what i'm talking about axons okay so they are of two type one is afferent another is efferent afferent are the one which are sensory which are sensory their function is to their function is to give information to cns so if i have this sensory receptor in my body for example my skin my skin have certain sensory receptor if something hot or cold touches here the neuron which neuron or the which nerve fibers afferent nerve fiber will give the information to my cns okay these are my afferent nerve fibers what are they doing these give information to the cns now what this arrow is this is a nerve fiber which nerve fiber afferent so afferent means towards so they the information is going towards the cns the information is going towards the cns that's why you call it as afferent means towards that's why you call it as afferent nerve fibers then we have efferent efferent means away they are usually motor nerve fibers so they carries the information away from the cns usually to muscles okay so these are efferent one for example for example i have to move this arm so technically this uh, cns is connected with motor neurons they will take the information from the cns and give it to the muscle and muscle will move so these are giving information to cns they are taking information from the cns that's the difference now next portion is types of nerve fibers okay so we have a myelinated nerve fibers then we have unmyelinated nerve fibers the myelinated nerve fibers are the one which have myelin sheath which have myelin sheath myelin sheath is a phospholipid what is it it's a phospholipid this is a lipid secreted by schwann cell secreted by schwann cell okay so if there is axon and this axon is wrapped by cells called schwann cell and these cells also secrete a white color lipid known as myelin sheath so this type of a nerve fiber will be known as a myelinated nerve fiber okay and there are axon where there is there may be um, there may be schwann cell present there may be schwann cell present but there is no but there is no myelin sheath or myelin sheath is absent then this type of nerve fibers you call them as unmyelinated so myelinated are present in spinal and cranial nerves the nerves present in your brain and spinal cord whereas unmyelinated is present in your autonomic and somatic nervous system fine i hope that's pretty clear to everyone now all right boys and girls moving further to the next part which is a very important topic of this chapter and yes the important function of your neurons what does neuron do what do you think what do you think what does neuron do any guesses you all have that guess yaar yeah. you all have that guess what does a neuron do or what is the function of a neuron excitability is a property of neuron respond to a stimulus is a function and then it will generate an electrical impulse this is what we say yes what is the function of a neuron to generate an electric impulse so what happen is so what happen is uh, your uh, neurons they are performing this uh, function of electrical impulse but why only neuron why not other other uh, cells so let's talk about the generation of nerve impulse okay so this uh, generation of nerve impulse is quite important 
uh, with respect to need point of view. So how does it starts? And as I've asked you the question, why not other uh, cells of body? They cannot generate this action potential. Why neurons only? Okay. So our if you remember our plasma membrane, plasma membrane. Every cell have a plasma membrane. This plasma membrane, this plasma membrane is made up of phospholipid. What it is made up of phospholipid. Okay. So to generate an electric current, to generate an electric current, we need the passage of ions. Definitely, you do that in physics. So we need the passage of the ions, like positive ions. Okay, they're moving here or there or negative ions. Okay. So if a membrane is for made up of lipid and lipid is an insulator, can it conduct the electric current? It cannot. It cannot. So for conducting that current, we need the passage of ions. We need the passage of ions. So like this, the no passage of ions can take place and no electric current will be generated. But what, what happens in neurons? If I'm talking about neurons, now I'm talking about neuron and this is a normal cell. Okay. The neurons, yes, it has a plasma membrane. It has a plasma membrane which is made up of phospholipid. But the difference is, I'm making this box, it is a neuron just for to simplify things. It is also having a plasma membrane which is made up of phospholipid. But there can be a movement of, there can be a movement of ions and all thanks to ion channels for this. Okay, so these ion channels are certain proteins. What are these? These are proteins which are kind of integral proteins. These allow the passage of these allow the passage of ions. For example, sodium ion channel. Which channel? Sodium ion channel. Because it is allowing the entry of sodium ions, so this channel is known as sodium ion channel. Okay. So, in neurons, ion channels are present. What are ion channels? These are like doors and these doors are not made up of wood or steel. These are made up of proteins and they allow the passage of ions across the membrane. So, ion channels are present are present here like our usual doors they open with the help of a key they open in response to a stimulus so they open in response to a stimulus this stimulus can be anything it can be change in potential difference it can be any mechanical stimulus stimulus can be of anything so likewise according to stimulus we have different types of ion channel okay all right, boys and girls. So let's see how the story begins. So if this is a, if this is a membrane, which membrane? The plasma membrane of a neuron. This is a membrane. Okay, and neuron is doing nothing. It is taking rest. It is taking rest. Whenever the neuron is not conducting anything and it is taking rest, we say that. For example, if this is outside, this is inside. We say that. Across the membrane, there is a potential difference. Across the membrane, there is a potential difference. And you call that potential difference as resting membrane potential. What do you call it as? Resting membrane potential. Okay. So, whenever a membrane is taking rest, there is a potential difference. There is change in the potential difference. And that is more negative towards inside and more positive towards outside so if i take a difference of all this charge and there comes a potential difference and that is around minus 70 millivolt inside we say that inside is more negative how much negative minus 70 millivolt and this minus 70 millivolt is your resting membrane potential so whenever your neuron is doing nothing no stimulus has arrived that time the neuron is taking rest and it has a potential difference across the membrane that is minus 70 millivolt. Now, how this minus 70 millivolt is sustained? Or the, it could be minus 30, it could be plus 70. Why it is minus 70 only? There are three reasons why it is minus 70. The first, uh, the first reason is differential permeability of potassium ions. Okay, now what is differential means different. Permeability, the passage, the allowance of the passage of ions. Okay, so if this is a membrane, if this is a membrane, 
and in this membrane and in this membrane i have ion channels uh, because uh, we say that we say that outside sodium ions are more we say that outside sodium ions are more we always say that outside that means in extracellular fluid sodium ions are more and in the cytosol potassium ions are more theek hai all right sometimes you know hindi comes out that's my reflex <laughs> and i'll be teaching you reflex in this chapter so if i say there are more potassium ion channels and there are less sodium ion channels okay so there will be more passage of potassium ion that means there will be more there will be more passage of potassium ions to the outside for example two potassium ions are going outside and in return only one sodium ion is coming inside that means you are giving two positive charge outside and taking one positive inside for example you are giving 2 rupees to an uh, uh, to a person and in return a person give you 1 rupees so you are at loss of 1 rupees understand for example i give you 2 rupees and you give me 1 rupee in return so now two potassium ions are going outside okay so now you must be thinking ma'am whenever uh, the electron is go, uh, is, is gained uh, there there is you know negative charge and whenever we lose electron there is a positive charge here here we are not talking about the electrons we are talking about the complete ion here okay whenever i'm giving giving two potassium ions that means a person is at profit of two so more positive is going outside and less positive is coming inside that means the inside is getting negative thing like 2 rupees are going outside and in return we are getting 1 rupees our balance is going negative okay so that's why the inner one is more negative as comparison to the outside like outside there is positive uh, uh, plus 1 okay and inside is Uh, uh sorry outside is plus 2 and inside is plus 1 that means if we cancel it we are at negative inside and positive outside that's why there is positive outside negative inside and the charge across the membrane is always negative the second reason of this is second reason of this is anions anions being larger molecules anions being larger molecules they get trapped inside they get trapped inside they cannot move outside second reason they also have a have uh, they do not have the more channels to pass them because charged particles charged particles or ions uh, cations or anions they need channels to pass through what if there are no channels so whatever anions are there inside the cell they will be trapped here and when they will find outside positive they will get attracted towards the membrane and this is how the inside becomes more negative okay understood the potential difference is always across the membrane never inside never inside so when the anions are not able to when the anions are not able to escape the cell they will get attracted towards the positive charge outside and they will accumulate here as a result there is the change in the Uh, or you can say there is a uh, potential difference across the membrane that occurs here okay so wh what is the reason anions being larger in size cannot pass through the membrane okay and the third and very most important that you will also be doing it in the later part is a sodium potassium atpase pump sodium potassium atpase pump which is really very important yes it is important what about this pump why it is so much important so what does this pump do is if this is a membrane and this is a pump pump are usually made up of protein only but they use atp what do they use atp they use atp whenever we are using atp that means we are going against the concentration gradient okay we say the sodium is higher outside and potassium ions are higher inside okay now we are using atp that means we are moving things against the concentration gradient that means low to high so that means from inside the sodium will move outside and from outside the potassium will move inside this is what we are going to do 
yes if i say the sodium is higher outside and lower inside it is we are using atp that means the things will move against the concentration gradient and they will move from inside to outside so what this pump do is it will it will transport three sodium ions outside and it will push in two potassium ions inside again we are at loss of 1 rupee yes you gave 3 rupees to the outside but inside there are only 2 rupees coming again we are at negative here and positive outside so this is what has been created so these three reasons are responsible for the the difference in the uh, resting membrane potential or potential difference across fine i hope that's clear to everyone now so if someone ask you what are the three reason of minus 70 millivolt can have it okay all right now how the uh, how your uh, this um, electric impulse is generated so the story starts from resting membrane potential this is resting membrane potential rmp we say outside there is positive charge and inside there is negative charge and across the membrane there is minus 70 millivolt okay yes if this is outside and this is inside outside sodium ions concentration is higher in the extracellular fluid and here is the cytosol the potassium ions concentration is more now when a stimulus arrives for example a stimulus arises here what is the stimulus change in the environment for example you touch someone like this and you ask a person to respond to you so this is a kind of stimulus when a stimulus arises your sodium ion channels they open Which ion channels open? Sodium ions. So if the stimulus arises, a chain, chain. So I was about to say ion channel, and what comes out from my uh, mouth? Chain. <laughs> Anyways, okay, leave it. So when a uh, stimulus arises, a channel opens, and what is this channel? This is a sodium ion channel. These are a type of leaky channel. Leaky channels are channels which open and respond randomly. but it needs a very small stimulus even in the very low kind of a stimulus they can open they are very sensitive like there are people now you will say something to them and they will start crying they are over sensitive channels so these channel open even when a very small stimulus will arise okay so here when a sodium ion channel open you know what will happen you know because outside sodium is higher because outside sodium is higher so the sodium will move inside okay because these work along the concentration gradient pump works against concentration gradient because they can utilize one atp and that atp they can break it into adp and ip form the energy and they can go uphill against the concentration gradient but here we have to go downhill so no atp is used so everything will go from higher to lower concentration okay and the sodium ions will enter inside inside where in the cytosol in a cytosol okay in so if this is a neuron cell when you will touch a neuron the neuron will take a lot of sodium inside as a result because ions are coming inside the charge that minus 70 millivolt will start going towards positive side yes now what will happen it will become minus 55 millivolt now which is more positive this or this you better know this is more positive yes we are talking about minus 0 and here minus 1 minus 2 out of minus 1 and minus 10 which is more positive minus 1 is more positive okay now as this potential difference has occurred you call it as threshold stimulus so this stimulus is required this is a minimum stimulus required to generate an action potential at this stimulus because at this stimulus another ion channel will open which is a voltage gated which is a voltage gated sodium ion channel these are again sodium ion channel but the stimulus is different difference but there is a difference in stimulus between these two channel these are leaky these will open only in response to change in the potential difference now again more sodium will enter inside as a result this minus 55 will become more positive around plus 30 millivolt as a result you will see the charge has been reversed now inside it is more positive now outside more negative this stage is known as depolarization and we say that now the action potential is generated what is generated 
action potential. Once this is achieved, plus 30 millivolt action potential is generated. Now the things will go reverse. You know, just like karma, everything goes back. Okay, now it has to go back to this position. So here, here, what ion channels will open? Here, potassium ion channels will open. And you know, potassium is higher inside. Now the potassium will move outside. At plus 30 millivolt, potassium ion channel will open. Again, these are voltage gated because there is a difference in the voltage. As a result, what will happen now? Everything will go reverse. Now, this thing will happen. Inside it becomes negative, outside positive because positive is going outside now. This stage is known as the repolarization. We have reversed the polarity. We have reversed the polarity. That means we have reversed the charge. But this stage, which is again minus 70 millivolt, is it exactly equivalent to this stage? Listen to me, my, uh, listen to the question what I'm asking. This stage has positive charge outside, negative inside, and this potential difference minus 70 millivolt. This stage also has positive uh, charge outside, negative inside. Again, this is minus 70 millivolt. But why can't we say this has a resting membrane potential? Why are we calling it as repolarization? The reason is, the reason is because now what has happened? Inside there is more sodium ion and outside there is more potassium. There sodium ion was higher inside and potassium was higher. Uh, sodium ion was uh, higher outside and potassium ions are higher inside. Okay. So that's why you call it as repolarization. So sometimes uh, potassium ion channels get open for longer duration. And this minus 70 millivolt later on goes to minus 90 millivolt as well. For example, if these potassium ion channels, they are open for longer duration, then what will happen? This can even go to minus 90 millivolt. And this stage is known as hyperpolarization. So if this state has occurred, this state has occurred where the charge is, uh, is same, but uh, the, ion, the ion distribution has disturbed. Now, how can you go back to resting membrane potential where now sodium will be higher outside and potassium will be higher inside with the help of pump. Now, what will come to rescue? Pump. Now, with the help of sodium, potassium, ATPase pump, what this pump will do? What this pump will do? This pump will move more sodium outside with using ATP and take more potassium in. As a result, the reverse will take place. The sodium will be higher outside and potassium will be higher inside. Now, this pump will cause resting membrane potential. And this is how your uh, electric impulse is generated. So, this is a main portion where action potential is generated. We say electric current is generated. And that portion will come out, uh, can, will come back to resting membrane potential. Okay. Now, this was, we were talking about one segment of the exon. What about the other segment? Okay. So, I was telling you that if this is a exon and in this exon, this portion was undergoing depolarization, repolarization. This was what we were asking. Okay. Or we were uh, doing, if this is the complete exon membrane. And I told you at this particular segment, call it as A, call this as B and call it as C. This was doing everything that we have done. First, it was undergoing depolarization, then it goes repolarization, then back to resting membrane potential. Okay. So, so what about the other fragments? What other fragments are doing at that time? So, now let's do it quickly. If the stimulus arises at this segment, you know what this segment will do? This segment will undergo depolarization. Here the charge is negative inside, positive outside. Because everything is at resting membrane potential. This is what we say at initial stage, everything is at resting membrane potential. Okay. Now what will happen? Because there is a stimulus on fragment A or the segment A, this segment will undergo depolarization. This is what we are saying. This fragment will undergo depolarization. Others will remain the same because others are unaware of the fact that there is a stimulus on A. Others are unaware of the fact that, uh, that uh, A has received the stimulus. The stimulus has occurred on one only, okay, at one particular position only. Now, what will happen? This has undergone depolarization now. 
you can see there is a difference in the charge here and this uh, charge difference will create a circuit here electrical circuit and this electrical circuit will act as a disturbance for segment b i am repeating it again because the stimulus has arrived here only this segment will be doing depolarization when this when the depolarization occurs there is a difference in charge between fragment or segment a and b yes this a and b have difference in the charge here and this will cause a formation of a circuit and this circuit the circuit of physics only not the circuit of munna bhai mbbs okay so this circuit will act as the electrical disturbance and this disturbance will act as a stimulus for the segment c uh, sorry segment b now b will undergo b will undergo b will undergo what depolarization yes yes simple now as soon as this undergo depolarization its fate is to undergo repolarization now the process will go same first there is resting membrane potential then depolarization then repolarization so in meanwhile the depolarized one will go back to repolarization okay and this one is at resting membrane potential this is at rmp this is undergoing depolarization this is undergoing repolar okay now again there is a difference in charge there is a formation of circuit now there is again a disturbance and there is a, a stimulus for c this disturbance will act as a stimulus for c so this is how the stimulus at one segment it causes electrical disturbance so that travels towards the entire axon okay and this travel or propagation is known as conduction this is known as conduction we have three topics in this chapter one is generation of nerve impulse how the nerve impulse is generated so what was happening over there in one segment depolarization action potential that's a generation of nerve impulse how it is traveling from a to b and b to c this is your conduction and conduction take place in one neuron only okay if this is one neuron this is axon we are seeing how when electrical or a, or a stimulus comes here how the action potential is generated this is a generation of a nerve impulse now how this travels from this point to this point across the membrane is a conduction of nerve impulse so that occurs due to stimulus okay now you must be thinking ma'am the electrical circuit has been formed here but there is also a electrical uh, electrical circuit forming why have you not tell us that here the, there can be another action potential generated guys no electrical disturbance can occur when it is undergoing repolarization because it is already undergoing its one cycle when it will complete its one cycle and return to resting membrane potential only then it can undergo and formation of next action potential understood if it would be at resting membrane potential and this is a depolarization then we can say an electrical circuit can be formed and it can generate the new action potential or it can undergo depolarization but since it is going or it is undergoing its own cycle of repolarization then it will go to hyperpolarization then it will go to resting membrane potential that's why a new electrical circuit cannot cause disturbance and hence no a new action potential can be generated in a previous one and this period is known as a refractory period which period refractory period refractory period is that period or that time where you cannot or you cannot form any action new action potential you cannot form any new depolarization in the axon membrane when it is already undergoing repolarization so it is that time frame where no stimulus can cause generation of new action potential because it is already undergoing something okay so refractory period it is a time where no stimulus can generate new action potential okay 
so only rmp if we have rmp only then we can generate action potential not at repolarization not at hyperpolar okay cool enough okay so that's why it always move in one direction it will always move in one direction not the backward okay so that's the conduction now let's talk about the types of conduction now you will say ma'am types yes boys and girls we have two types of nerve fibers we have a myelinated nerve fiber we have the unmyelinated nerve fibers okay so that's why our conduction has two category one category of continuous and another category of saltatory saltatory occur in myelinated nerve fibers in myelinated nerve fibers and the continuous occur in non myelinated nerve fiber since this lipid is an insulator since lipid is an insulator if i have no insulator across a membrane imagine this is the exon and it doesn't have any insulator everything will go as it was going in the in the conduction part that we have done okay there is no obstruction everything will go in that segments and it will be continuous there is no uh, halt or stoppage the conduction is going smooth and continuous okay but what if we have obstruction for example this is exon nerve fiber and at places we have myelin sheath and myelin sheath will not allow any impulse to pass through because it is made up of lipid and it is an insulator so the conduction will have to jump or the action potential have to jump like this and from here the word comes saltatory that means jumping jumping conduction now you will say ma'am how it will jump because they are so minute the distance is less so if the distance is less the electrical circuit can be formed if the distance is more the electrical circuit would be difficult to be formed but since the distance is so much uh, less between these two points i'm drawing it so you think it's a large dif difference okay large distance between this point and this point but it's a cell it's minute so here this point and this point will be having the charge difference a circuit will be formed so here it is going through jumps so that's why this type of conduction is saltatory or jumping why because myelin sheath present here is an insulator it will not allow the impulse to pass through this position so what do you think which one is faster this one or this one what do you think if i'm moving like this it will take time but what if i jump it will take less time okay so jumping one is more faster first of all second thing here the entire membrane is not responsible for conducting okay so if my all body parts are not working less atp will be used imagine if i'm just uh, standing here and i'm writing like this one thing is i'm standing here and writing like this second is i'm just running here and there like i'm doing right now what do you think at which point more atp will be used where i'm running so here more membrane is used more electrical disturbance is there more atp will be used for uh, you know during uh, rmp or forming rmp by using pump okay if i'm saying here pump is used to bring hyperpolarization or repolarization back to resting membrane potential if my every membrane is doing this function more atp will be used but here but here since the entire membrane is not used here only few portions are conducting so less atp will be used here less atp okay so these are the two type of conduction the saltatory and the continuous continuous occur where there is no myelin sheath the one we have done before and this one occurs where there is a myelin sheath present okay all right so continuous where it will be there or uh, tell me the location of continuous conduction where were non myelinated fibers you have done yaar you have done non myelinated fibers oh ho this one okay myelinated spinal and cranial nerves whereas non myelinated in this system so hence this location you know and there will be the conduction accordingly so continuous will be in the autonomic nervous system whereas this one in the cranial and spinal nerve simple good to go okay moving further now 
what we have done right now what we have done right now we have we have generated action potential here we have conducted the action potential towards the entire membrane now we want this action potential to travel from one neuron to another and this is known as transmission generation at one particular point you have created action potential conduction traveling through the entire membrane of a neuron transmission from one neuron to another so transmission involves the transmission of nerve impulse from one neuron to another neuron one neuron to another okay so for transmission you need to understand a very important thing which is known as a synapse what is it synapse what is a synapse so synapse is a functional contact between two neurons so this is a synapse what is a synapse functional contact between two neurons between two neurons so these synapses are of two types one is a chemical synapse and another is the electrical okay so synapses are of two type one is electrical another is the chemical one so let's talk about uh, what's the difference between the electrical and chemical synapse and how does it help in transmission of pulse let's get started okay so first of all we'll talk about the chemical one okay in chemical synapse for example we have this first neuron which have the action potential okay which have generated its action potential and then then we have another neuron which is present just below it okay so likewise we say this neuron because this uh, functional contact is known as a synapse this functional contact is known as a synapse so we call the first neuron as pre synaptic neuron what it is pre synaptic neuron because it is present before the synapse has, has been formed and this membrane is pre synaptic membrane this membrane it is pre synaptic membrane pre synaptic so this neuron which is formed after the formation of synapse is a post synaptic neuron and its membrane will be known as membrane will be known as post synaptic membrane this post synaptic membrane okay now how does the nerve impulse travel from this neuron to this since it is a chemical synapse so you know chemicals will be involved so here we have small sac like structures known as synaptic vesicles these synaptic vesicles they have chemicals known as neurotransmitters okay so these are neurotransmitters neurotransmitters are chemicals so what happen is when the action potential come across the membrane so this is the nerve impulse that coming okay so this nerve impulse when reaches the synaptic nobs what are these structures synaptic nob or pre synaptic membrane here there is opening of there is opening of calcium ion channel so there are channel present known as calcium ion channel they will open when the action potential reaches here for example the action potential reaches here through that conduction process so these channel will open and hence the calcium will move inside okay nerve impulse arrives here which will lead to opening of calcium ion channel and calcium will move inside this pre synaptic uh, neuron okay now this calcium ion will fuse with the synaptic vesicle what are these synaptic vesicles and as a result these synaptic vesicle they will burst they will burst and releasing its neuro transmitter and this neurotransmitter is released in this space and this space is known as synaptic cleft what is this space known as synaptic cleft 
now most of you gets confused between synaptic cleft and synapse synapse is a uh, is this entire thing the functional contact between two neuron and the space between two neuron space between two neuron is the synaptic cleft so this neurotransmitter has been released here the wimples come calcium and open calcium go inside join with the synaptic vesicle synaptic vesicle bursts releasing neurotransmitter now this neurotransmitter now this neurotransmitter will bind to the receptors present on the postsynaptic membrane so postsynaptic membrane have receptors so these receptors are of two type depending upon the neurons these are of two type depending upon the neuron for example if this receptor is sodium ion channel and a neurotransmitter bind to this receptor this will lead to opening of new, uh, sodium ion channel and sodium will move inside because you know sodium is higher outside so it will move inside along the concentration gradient and when the sodium moves inside and when the sodium moves inside what happen depolarization and when the depolarization take place that means the other neuron has been excited or the electric impulses generated in this neuron okay so this happen when you want to travel information of excitation from this to another and you want some other function to occur okay but what if you want to inhibit the function you don't want this neuron to get excited at that point the neurotransmitter will bind to this potassium ion channel for example this is potassium ion channel now if it binds to potassium ion channel potassium is higher inside it will move outside from higher to lower along the concentration gradient and now what will happen repolarization and whenever repolarization occur there is inhibition there is inhibition so the potential that is formed in a postsynaptic neuron you call it as postsynaptic potential so we say postsynaptic potential can be of two type it can be excitatory it can be inhibitory so psp what is psp post synaptic potential that is formed it depends upon what type of channel has been opened if the sodium ion channel is opened the post synaptic potential will be excitatory if the potassium ion channel is open it will be inhibitory so this is how the chemical synapses are better because you can generate two type of response depending upon what type of receptor is present on neuron and depending upon what type of neurotransmitter is there so neurotransmitters can also be inhibitory they can also be excitatory so we have different type of neurotransmitters you must have heard of like acetylcholine like uh, dopamine so dopamine is one example of inhibitory oh ho dopamine okay whereas excitatory we have like adrenaline acetylcholine is both inhibitory and excitatory so its function depends upon the type of receptor present okay if we, for example on this neuron this is present and the neurotransmitter releases ach so it will bind to here excitation will occur imagine in the neuron only this type of receptor is present so it is ach will bind to this and it will cause in okay so this is a transmission from one neuron to another with the help of neurotransmitter what will happen in case of electrical synapse electrical in electrical synapse the distance between two neuron is almost negligible as you have seen there is a lot of difference around in this synaptic uh, cleft but here in the electrical synapse you will find out the difference in between the two neuron or the distance between two neuron is almost negligible so these electrical synapses function on or their function depends upon the gap junctions so these are gap junctions present between two neurons what are these gap junction okay so these gap junction for example how do they work for example if the nerve impulse arises here and there will be electrical disturbance and there will be movement of ions there will be movement of ions as you can see the movement of ions can be of either of the direction right so this type of a synapse can give information in both the direction so we say it's a bidirectional synapse bidirectional 
and as you can see the working or functioning is so simple hence the speed will be faster it is faster than the other okay so this one depends only on the gap junction and there is just electrical movement of the ions or the there is just ion movement lead to the disturbance in the uh, adjoining neuron so this is neuron 1 this is neuron 2 but the disadvantage is that you cannot make changes accordingly for example in chemical we have different types of responses inhibitory and excitatory this is usually the excitatory one so you cannot alter the response with the help of different type of neurotransmitter here but this is comparatively simple and faster where do you find this one you usually find it in your like brain you find it in your uh, embryonic stages in embryo okay so mostly the neurotransmitters that we or uh, the synapses we have they are chemical synapses okay so this was about the synapses let's talk about the central nervous system so as i've told you the central nervous system consists of two parts what are these what are these boys and girls come on brain and spinal cord brain and spinal cord okay if i talk about brain brain is further divided into three parts what are these one is a forebrain another is a midbrain and third is a hindbrain okay let's talk about parts first and then we will talk about it in detail the forebrain consists of cerebrum diencephalon and olfactory lobes midbrain consists of corpora quadrigemina and cerebral peduncles okay Whereas hindbrain consists of medulla, pons, and cerebellum. The midbrain plus hindbrain except cerebellum. Midbrain plus hindbrain except cerebellum. This portion is known as brain stem. Is known as brain stem. Okay. So this is just the introduction of the parts of brain. Let's talk about the brain in detail. So let's see the structure of brain with the help of diagram, right? So there is a in NCRT if it's, if you have seen there is a diagram of brain, this one. So first of all we'll talk about four brain. So four brain have three parts: cerebrum, diencephalon, and olfactory lobes. So in this diagram, I will only be dealing with all those structure which I have mentioned you yet now. No other structure. I will be explaining them in the later uh, sections. Okay. So first of all, first of all, the forebrain have a highly folded part, the largest part of the brain, that cerebrum. So this portion is cerebrum, right? Then we have diencephalon. So diencephalon is further made up of three parts. One is thalamus, another is hypothalamus, and third one is epithalamus. So this portion is epithalamus. What is this epithalamus? So you have seen this, the diencephalon. Okay. So this portion is epithalamus. Epi means above, hypo means below. So the portion that is above thalamus is epithalamus, which is below thalamus is hypothalamus. Okay. Then we have olfactory lobes. These are not seen here. So I'm skipping it. Then we have midbrain. So this portion of your brain is midbrain, this portion. Then we have hindbrain. Hindbrain is this portion. Okay. This is cerebrum. This, uh, as you can see here, this one. This is the pons. And then the last, last portion is medulla that elongates to form your spinal cord. Okay. Now let's talk about them in detail. First of all, we have the largest part of the brain, that's cerebrum, and it is highly folded. Why it is folded? To increase the surface area. If anything is folded, that means it is increasing the surface area. And for what? Like uh, in digestion, we have microvilli that increases the surface area so that there is more absorption. Then why do we need more surface area here? More the surface area, more the neurons. 
also it is a seat of intelligence and it is one of the most complex part so your uh, uh, this cerebrum it is divided into two hemispheres so there are two parts you, you you always have you know heard that your brain have two parts left and right so here we have the left side of a brain the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere like this so there are two hemisphere the right hemisphere and this is the left hemisphere both these part the left and the right brain they are connected to each other with the group of fibers nerve fibers known as corpus callosum so there are a lot of nerve fibers they are collectively known as corpus callosum they are de they are joining both the parts together so this will tell what the left is doing to the right one okay so this will tell what one part is doing to the other so this is corpus callosum so what is corpus callosum nerve fibers that connect two hemispheres okay all right now talking about the uh, what this uh, cerebrum is made up of so your cerebrum have two areas cerebrum definitely it is made up of neurons and it has two areas the outer area and the inner area the outer area is known as cortex and it consists of gray matter whereas the inner one is known as or it contains white matter so if you will see the section of your brain you will see that uh, this outer portion of brain like these folds are present here in the brain these folds they are known as gyrus what are they known as gyrus so all these folds are known as gyrus g y r s now you will see the outer portion of the brain this this portion is gray in color okay i will shade it in the gray this portion is gray in color this one and inner portion this portion this is white in color why because the brain consists of a lot of myelinated nerve fiber which nerve fibers myelinated nerve fibers so these myelinated nerve fibers their myelin sheath color is white as i have told you okay in the neuron so these myelinated nerve fibers is their white in color so it will give the appearance of a white color matter whereas this is consist of collection of cell bodies or cyton and they have nasal bodies and nasal bodies give gray color so gray matter is due to gray matter consist of collection of cyton or cell body of neuron and cell body have nasal bodies and nasal body gives gray color whereas white matter is due to myelin sheath due to myelin sheath so this matter is your white matter and this one is your gray matter okay i hope this is pretty clear all right now as you have seen this diagram in this diagram so uh, this is the isolated brain but what do you think brain being the so much important part is it uh, uh, protected by something so if you cut a brain first of all you need to shave your hair and then there will be a skin below the skin there will be your skull your bone and inside that is present your brain so your brain is covered by protective coverings your brain is covered by these protective coverings you call them as meninges what do you call them as meninges so meninges are protective coverings of brain protective coverings of brain right so how many meninges do we have we have around 3 from outside to inside the outermost covering is dura mater dura word comes from durable so what is present outside it needs to be so tough because this is the first one to get in contact with outside environment so the outermost covering is dura mater okay this is the outermost the middle one the middle one is arachnoid mater arachnoid word comes from arachnida class of spiders because this looks like webs of spiders so that's why its name is arachnoid meta and the innermost one is pia meta out of all these the toughest one is your dura meta 
the web like is your arachnoid meta and highly vascular is priya meta this is the one which is in direct contact with your brain tissue that is cerebrum okay that's why i have told it here not before it because here you will see if you have these uh, convulsions or the folds of your cerebrum so pia meta if pia meta this is pia meta it will also be coming down along with them like this because it has blood vessel because it has blood vessel so blood vessels are so much important here because brain needs nourishment brain needs nourishment so that nourishments come from blood only okay so pia meta is in direct contact with brain tissue with brain tissue okay i hope that's pretty clear to everyone now so coming back to here so what are the folds in your uh, cerebrum they are gyrus folds are important because we need to increase the surface area you have two matter the outer one is the cortex which is gray matter gray matter is due to cell bodies which contain nasal bodies which is gray in color and white matter is due to white white color of myelin sheath because it contains collection of exon okay moving further to the lobes of the cerebrum all right so here i have something to show you so if you can see this is a brain and brain uh, looks like this this the entire largest portion is cerebrum and here you have an other parts these parts as you can see here this is uh, uh, cerebrum this 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 entire cerebrum this portion is your midbrain this one is your midbrain as you can see here this is your midbrain okay and this portion is your hindbrain this one is hindbrain and here we have cerebellum okay so first of all focus on the cere cere cerebrum so this a uh, color colored one is entire cerebrum whereas this is cerebellum this is cerebellum this is midbrain this is pons and medulla okay so as i've told you the brain stem consists of uh, your uh, midbrain hindbrain except cerebellum so if you will see this structure it looks like a stem of a plant yes it looks like a stem of a plant that's why you call it as brain stem it contains midbrain pons and medulla because cerebellum this cerebellum is like not the part of brain stem you can see easily because it looks like a plant stem so that's why we have called it as a brain stem now talking about the cerebrum so cerebrum is divided into various lobes as you can see here this blue one is your frontal lobe which is present here the name is given according to the skull bones then we have this portion the parietal lobe then this one which is present here the temporal lobe and this one the occipital lobe okay so the entire brain is divided into lobes so every lobe has its function has its function it every lobe is performing better functions different functions for example the nature has given responsibility to the one lobe that you will do these function you will do these function for example your intelligence is controlled by your frontal lobe which lobe frontal so frontal is responsible for all your voluntary actions for example if i am doing these actions all these informations are coming from my this portion frontal portion then creative ideas my iq my intelligence eq iq is intelligence quotient eq is emotion quotient so my emotions are also controlled by my uh, this portion logic reasoning will power everything comes from frontal okay so what you are as a person is controlled by your frontal portion then the sensation of touch ho uh, touch hot cold pain in fact taste and position position means i know my body know i'm standing here or my body knows even i if i close my eyes my body knows my nose is here my ear are here or better say this portion helps you to locate map this is like your gps okay temporal this one temporal is here and where do you put headphones and mic on the temporal one so this all the information of sound right now you are listening to me it goes to your temporal lobe and occipital lobe is responsible for vision the smell sensation goes to the temporal lobe whereas taste sen sensation goes to the parietal okay for example i ate something so my taste sensation will go to parietal so all these lobes of cerebrum are basically um, controlling the you know memory also if i am saying i know what the taste of maggi is that means my parietal lobe have that area that area which knows the taste of maggi 
because it is in the form of memory okay for example if i heard a song i heard a song and i know the lyrics and music of it that means my temporal has a memory of it so all these cerebrums area cortex uh, cortex have these cell bodies that are forming a lot of synapses and your memory is present in the form of synapses and circuit okay so whenever you learn new thing na for example you are learning this thing which is new a synapse is formed in your body or in your brain a synapse is formed so if accidentally that synapse get cut off that memory will also get cut off okay all right next moving further to the areas now all these lobes have areas the areas is depending upon the type of neuron that it contains for example in a frontal lobe if down here there is certain group of neuron which are taking sensory information that is a sensory area again in parietal uh, or in frontal only we have this portion which control motor activity so this will be a motor area so every lobe depending upon its function has different types of areas in your brain there are three types of area sensory motor associated sensory is a area which receives sensory information sensory input for example you are listening to me you are uh, or you can say uh, you, uh, you are looking at me or uh, maybe certain emotions all these senses they will go to which area of the brain sensory area okay now motor it will helps in actions or motor activities so motor area is a one that will start motor activities or muscular activities for example i am moving my i am moving my arm so my voluntary activities are controlled by the frontal only in frontal there will be a motor area that will send the impulses okay then we have association area what does association area do so association area basically takes the information from sensory then it will read it convert it into motor and whatever it had it has read it it will convert it into the form of memory for example there are two friends there are two friends okay there are two friends so what what should we name them what should we name them okay one is pushpa and another is rocky so now these pushpa and rocky they have a common love affair okay they have a common love affair say it any girl x now rocky said rocky said hey this is my girlfriend don't touch it no touch and touch is different thing okay don't mix it up there okay now pushpa says i am pushpa she is my now they got a fight and rocky give a slap to pushpa okay now pushpa have a sensory information which will go to sensory area of the brain now the motor area of pushpa motor area of pushpa will give slap to rocky and rocky's this information sensory information will go to its sensory area now both area or uh, the both the areas the sensory and the motor both's information will be read by another area which is silent which is not doing anything the only function of this area this association area is to read what the sensory and motor are doing and now this association area of both these people will uh, will store this information in the form of memory now they both have memory thanks to the association area what memory that pushpa and rocky they had a fight now they are no more friends now they are no more friends why due to a girl so this entire thing will be stored in the form of logic reasoning and memory whatsoever has happened and this is due to association so what does association area do association area read the sensory information convert it into motor and store in the form of memory logic reasoning logic and reason right so this is the function of different areas of the brain so all these area can be present in one single lobe as well maybe one lobe will contain one type of area that depend upon the function of a lobe like uh, 
usually all these three areas are present in your uh, in your frontal lobe okay maybe in your occipital lobe only sensory is there because it is only doing the function of vision fine so that depends upon what type of function it is performing next we have is diencephalon as i've told you diencephalon has three parts epithalamus thalamus and hypothalamus so if i draw this diagram of diencephalon this is thalamus this is epithalamus so epithalamus posteriorly have a gland known as pineal gland which gland pineal gland so this is thalamus this is epithalamus and below the thalamus is present you all know boys and girls hypothalamus there is hypothalamus now epithalamus is a portion which is highly vascular it is highly vascular and posteriorly it has pineal gland this pineal gland produces hormone melatonin and melatonin hormone is responsible for controlling your sleep and wake cycle sleep and right then we have thalamus thalamus has a lot of neuron so it's a highly nervous portion it control your touch temperature pain and pressure all these things are controlled by your thalamus okay it because it has a lot of neuron talking about hypothalamus it is also highly vascular portion and it has two two small bodies these are known as mammillary bodies what are these mammillary bodies and mammillary bodies why they are known as mammillary bodies because it appears like your mammary glands and they are responsible for smell what is the main function of hypothalamus it secretes hormones two type of hormones one hormone which are hormones of hypothalamus get stored in posterior pituitary and second the hormones that controls anterior pituitary for more information about hormones go to chemical control and coordination a lot of students are saying in the comments Ma'am, please go. Uh, please, please give us lecture of chemical control and coordination. Please go to all the videos and check. We have covered each and every uh, chapter wholeheartedly for you with the, a lot of hard work. So, so please check it. Okay. Then, hunger and thirst center is in your hypothalamus. In fact, satiety. Satiety means satisfaction. For example, if you have eaten something or you are happy with something. that is controlled by a hypothalamus sexual behavior and emotions and in fact emotions they are controlled by hypothalamus thermostat that means temperature regulation is controlled by hypothalamus sometimes you get fever and your body temperature gets high that's cause of hypothalamus so thermostat means anything that regulates body temperature all right next we have our olfactory lobes so where are all olfactory lobes present if this is your brain okay this is your frontal lobe which lobe frontal lobe so below frontal lobe are present the olfactory lobes these olfactory lobes are paired in humans right this is olfactory lobe it is present below frontal lobe these are paired what is its function smell helps in smell so the sensation of smell from nose first goes to these lobes and from lobes it will go to your cerebrum okay and in cerebrum it will be uh, the part of your memory so these uh, olfactory lobes have two portion as you can see this is olfactory tract and this is this portion is olfactory bulb and collectively this entire structure is known as olfactory lobe okay what is its function the only function is to control smell next we have limbic system the so limbic system is your emotional brain some people are so much emotional that they see or uh, they are watching a movie and uh, they started crying just like me i'm very emotional i cry like anything you just show me one uh, emotional scene on television i'll be having hair ganga and hair yamuna seriously those rivers will start so that depends upon your limbic system your emotional brain okay 
सो लिम्बिक सिस्टम और इमोशनल ब्रेन कंसिस्ट ऑफ अ लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ योर फोर ब्रेन वॉट इट कंसिस्ट इट इज कंसिस्ट ऑफ इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ पार्ट ऑफ फोर ब्रेन as you can see its shape is a tuning fork shape it is fork shape so above you can see a structure this this is corpus callosum and below corpus callosum is present your here thalamus epithalamus and your hypothalamus thalamus and epithalamus are not the part of limbic system i'm just telling you the location here we have this structure known as hypothalamus which is a part of limbic system here we have nuclei called as septum nuclei now what is this nuclei this is not a nucleus of a cell nuclei in neurons or neural biology we call it as group of cyton or cell body of your neuron so what is a nuclei group of cell body you know na the cell body yes the Neuron has two part. The upper part cell body, and down there is axon. So it's a combination of cell body. Then we have here hippocampus. Hippocampus, and here we have amygdala. So all are controlling your emotional brain. How? hippocampus first of all we start with septum nuclei septum nuclei and hypothalamus both control your sexual behavior whenever someone is undergoing uh, or someone is attracted to the opposite sex or whatever it is so at that time your septum nuclei will be functioning more and amygdala will be off switched off why amygdala is the defense castle of body that means it will defend you it will help in or it it controls the emotions of anger rage so whenever you get anger you cannot be sexually active at that time only one thing can happen right so both are opposite emotions so this one amygdala controls anger and rage there was a study where uh, they got to know that criminals who commit a very heinous crimes their amygdala has more neurotransmitters that means amygdala is functioning uh more than the normal person so because it is uh, causing anger and rage and hence there is no control on emotions and person uh, uh person commits these crimes then hippocampus function is to convert short term memory into long term into long term for example now you are learning this topic from me everything is going in a short term memory it will only go into the long term when it passes through hippocampus and how it will pass through hippocampus if you keep on revising thing if you keep on revising so that's your limbic system boys and girls so this controls all your emotions so be aware of your emotions <laughs> then we have okay then we have the midbrain so midbrain as i've told you is made up of two things one is your cerebral peduncles these are cerebral peduncles which are present on ventral surface okay let's see this and this portion is corpora quadrigemina okay before it uh, i will like to show you this diagram as you can see here this is the uh huh uh huh uh yeah okay So this portion is a ventral portion. This portion is a dorsal portion. So I am showing you this. That is your midbrain. This portion is midbrain. Okay, this one. Okay, this portion. This is your midbrain. So the portion that you can see here of midbrain is cerebral peduncles. What are these cerebral peduncles? Now let's move it here. Now this portion that you see here is your is your corpora quadrigemina corpora quadrigemina okay now come here so the corpora quadrigemina what it is formed of corpora quad regemina quad means four because it is made up of two superior colliculi and two inferior colliculi so that's why its name is known as corpora quadrigemina 
सो दिस इज अ सेक्शन ऑफ योर मिड ब्रेन सो सिमिलर थिंग विल बी प्रेजेंट हियर ऑल्सो सो हाउ मेनी दीज राउंड स्ट्रक्चर्स विल बी देयर फोर वन टू थ्री फोर टेक फॉर बॉल्स एंड अटैच दम लाइक दिस ओके बॉल्स ओके वन टू थ्री फोर दिस इज वॉट कॉर्पोरा क्वारिजेमिनाइज एंड इट इज प्रेजेंट एट डॉर्सल सर्फेस वेयर एज ऑन वेंट्रल सर्फेस वी हैव जस्ट वन बॉल बिग बॉल दैट इज सेरिब्रल प्रोडंकल्स सेरिब्रल प्रोडंकल्स इज हैविंग अ लॉट ऑफ नर्व फाइबर्स विच आर कमिंग फ्रॉम द फोर ब्रेन विच आर कमिंग फ्रॉम द फोर ब्रेन बिकॉज हेयर वी हैव फोर ब्रेन हेयर वी हैव हाइंड ब्रेन सो द फंक्शन ऑफ सेरिब्रल प्रोडंकल इज टू कनेक्ट फोर ब्रेन विद हाइंड ब्रेन with hind brain and here we have small canal and this is known as cerebral aqueduct or iter or it is known as iter or it is also known as aqueduct or duct of sylvius okay then we have these uh, quadri gemina this entire is corpora quadri gemina and corpora quadri gemina is responsible for reflexes the lot of reflexes vision reflexes and uh, your uh, auditory reflexes are controlled by your corpora quadri gemina that's your midbrain now we have next that is your hind brain so what hind brain uh, is made up of yes the hind brain is made up of medulla pons and cerebellum so medulla is a portion let's see the diagram quickly this is a pons this is a mid brain okay, let me choose this color this is mid brain this entire is four brain see how how big is four brain this is your pons this is your medulla okay this is cerebellum so the function of pons is first of all we'll talk about pons its function is it is acting as a bridge it is connecting it is connecting everything it is connecting to the mid brain right it is a connection between the uh, uh, it is a connection with the cerebellum and it has connection with the medulla so this is a bridge between all these structure so it can relay impulses everywhere so that's why we have given it name pons pons literal meaning is bridge what is the meaning its meaning is bridge okay so talking about a medulla so we have medulla here which elongates to form this structure known as spinal cord and here we have cerebellum so as you can see this structure it is just like your cerebrum can you see that your cerebrum is also folded this is also folded right so that's why it got its name little cerebrum it has got its name little cerebrum because it appears like a cerebrum okay let's write it down so medulla is a portion which is a last portion it extend extends to form spinal cord it is the portion that has a lot of centers control center what control center does it have we will start with the chapter digestion in digestion we uh, you must have done vomiting so vomiting center is in medulla okay deglutition that means to take in the food is in medulla all right then come to next chapter that is breathing and exchange of gases your uh, breathing center which respiratory rhythm center is in respiratory rhythm center is in your medulla then come to next chapter the blood body fluids cardiovascular center is also in medulla fine pons pons it acting as a bridge it connects medulla it connects to medulla and cerebellum and mid brain it also have a center known as pneumotaxic center if you remember we have done it pneumotaxic center is a switch off center of breathing it's in pons what about cerebellum 
it is known as little cerebrum why first of all it is highly folded second it has two hemispheres it also have two hemispheres what is the function of cerebellum what does it do you dance because of cerebellum all your muscular activities are initiated by your frontal cortex of cerebrum but they are coordinated by cerebellum so whenever you learn dance for example uh, a dance teacher taught me a step this one so i have initiated my muscular activities like this i have initiated my muscular activities due to cerebrum but now my teacher taught me to move head like this so i'm doing all these things this is a coordination yes so this coordination is due to cerebellum so in start or during learning process we are not able to coordinate things but later on everything goes side by side how because cerebellum learn the things so when cerebellum learn the things everything gets coordinated for example when you swim those who swim they will be knowing that what we do we use the hand movements we are also using the leg movement and we are also breathing simultaneously so all these movements that we are doing muscular movements not the breathing one muscular one it's a coordination and that is due to cere bellum started the muscular uh, voluntary actions are started by cerebrum but coordinated by cerebellum it coordinates voluntary muscular activity next so you must have seen people who are highly drunk they walk like this yes and you will find some of people like sleeping on the side of the road they don't know about world what's happening right so whenever you uh, drink a lot of alcohol why do people are walking like this or in the movies you have seen you have done the acting they do like this yeah why because your alcohol it hits your cerebellum and the function of cerebellum is equilibrium to maintain posture and equilibrium of your body that's the function of cerebellum so the second important function is equilibrium and balance balance of it. okay so that's about your cerebellum so now you know why why people after one or two pegs get tear in there <laughs> fine okay that's about your hind brain let's talk about ventricles now what are ventricles ventricles are are spaces in brain filled by cerebrospinal fluid cerebrospinal fluid okay so in our brain in our brain blood never enters directly into the brain pia meta have blood vessels but blood never directly enters into our brain the reason is because blood may have a lot of harmful substances and the nature doesn't want to take a risk because neurons cannot divide if a bad thing microbe or antibody comes to your brain and your neurons get damaged it will not be formed again so nature has given you something and that's your blood brain barrier so blood has to pass through that barrier and gets filtered out and whatever get filters it become a fluid that is a fluid of your brain known as cerebrospinal fluid got it if this is your blood vessel if this is your blood vessel and this is your brain tissue and these are empty spaces in the brain known as ventricles okay and here we have neuroglial cells what cells neuroglial cells so blood will get filtered out through these tissue and this area is known as blood brain barrier so now blood will get filtered from here passing through this ileus and a fluid will be formed known as csf so csf is a fluid of brain formed by filtration of blood through blood brain barrier so these ventricles contain this fluid and we have a lot of ventricles in the brain let's see where are they the first ventricles we have are lateral ventricles lateral ventricles are present in your cerebrum 
So yes, cerebrum have hollow spaces inside them. If this is my cerebrum in the center, they have small little spaces known as ventricles. Now these ventricles will open into another ventricle which is present near thalamus and this is known as diaceal. Its another name is paraceal. Lateral ventricles another name is paraceal. Diaceal will then because now cerebrum down the cerebrum we have thalamus, hypothalamus, right? So there we have diaceal. And now down the hypothalamus, which what part of brain do we have? Midbrain. And midbrain brain have a canal in the center. What is its name? Iter, right? Iter or aqueduct. So this is your iter or aqueduct of midbrain. This also have CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. And then we have hindbrain. So near hindbrain, we have this fourth ventricle known as metaceal. This is fourth ventricle. Okay, this one is third ventricle. This is the third ventricle. Now, this fluid will ultimately go into the spinal cord. So, spinal cord also have center space, empty space. This is spinal cord. Spinal cord, right? So, the fluid is going into the spinal cord. What is that spinal cord's empty space? Central canal. All right. So, this portion, this opening is known as right. This opening is known as foramen of Magende. Foramen of Magende, which open into the spinal cord. Whereas these two, these are known as foramen of Lushka. So now you know their brain has small empty spaces. These are not actually empty. They contain your brain's fluid, which is cerebrospinal fluid. What is the function of this cerebrospinal fluid? First of all, it provides nutrients. It helps in waste exchange. And it also helps in protection, shock absorption. Right? So the function which was blood, the blood doing in your body, it will be done by CSF. Okay. All right. Okay. So next we have certain questions. Boys and girls, buckle up your seats and see how much you have learned. When a neuron is not conducting an impulse that is resting, the axonal membrane is comparatively more permeable too. So the question is simply asking, during resting membrane potential, who have more permeability? You know, differential permeability we have done. Because there are more potassium ion channels, so the permeability of potassium ions is next. Depolarization occurs due to why do depolarization occur? Because the sodium ion channels open in response to the stimulus and sodium ions come inside of a neuron. This was happening, right? So, influx of sodium ions, so not the efflux. Efflux means going outside, influx means going or coming inside. Answer 3. Next. If this question have been asked, repolarization occurs due to, then what would, what would you have been written? Due to efflux of potassium. Midbrain consists mainly of four round swelling called corpora quadrigemina, which are present ventrally, dorsally, anteriorly. Tell me, what is the location of this? Dorsally. Where are they present? Here. Dorsally. So answer is dorsally 2. Next, which of the following center is present in medulla? Pneumotexic, vomiting, thirst, hunger. Thirst and hunger are present in hypothalamus. So no conflict. Vomiting is present in medulla. Whereas pneumotexic, P for pons, P for pneumotexic. So pneumos, uh, P is silent. So answer is Alright, so this was it about the first part of neural control and coordination. The second part will be sending you soon. Till then, revise it, revise the NCRT. And guys, yes, those who, uh, who must be thinking, ma'am, you have not covered the structure of neuron. Guys, students, my beloved students, I have covered that in the chapter Structural Organization in Animals. Please, 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 it's a request. Please do not write in comments there that I have not covered it. I know some of you must be writing. So, I have covered it already there. Please go to that video first, watch it and then come here. Okay? And then do the neural control. And those who are like idle students, 
who do everything carefully they must be knowing the structure of neuron so you don't need to go it back if you already know the structure of so i will meet in the next lecture probably the last of this series the second part of neural control and coordination till then study hard i'll meet you again bye bye